Hello, and welcome back to the Sex Talk. My name is Mo Moshumi Ghosh. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, and I specialize in sex therapy. And today I am interviewing Kane Slosberg. Kane is a associate professional clinical counselor. Um, it's APCC, and um, Kane specializes in doing sex therapy, but Kane also has a background in some other stuff that we're going to talk about today. So I would love to introduce now Kane. Hi, Kane. Hi, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm Kane Slosberg. Um, started my training as a psychodynamic therapist and uh, completed a fellowship in dialectical behavior therapy uh, before joining Mo um, at last. So um, uh, breaking those two down, basically, psychodynamic is um, has a lot to do with uh, our history and how that presents uh, at the present and a little bit to do with sort of how we've managed to deal with everything that we've been through and whether or not we use those uh, pieces of management at the present. Uh, so it's exploring coping styles, exploring history. Um, and then DBT is a highly protocolized treatment. Um, so a full protocol DBT program includes individual therapy, uh, skills group, uh, and phone coaching, access to a therapist 24 seven. Um, for things like crisis management. So um, got to learn to combine both of those and then uh, doing a little bit more in relational and sex therapy now, which is really exciting to kind of see all the lenses interacting. I love it. So um, I'm, I took some notes down. So you were trained in psychodynamic and DBT. Mm -hmm. So you've had a lot of um, work with DBT. Well, for our, for our folks that don't know what DBT stands for, tell us what that is. Yes, so first is D dialectical. So breaking that first word down, it's basically uh, the idea that um, two truths can exist at one time. So um, I'll tell you. Never knew that. <laughs> I love yeah. that. I never knew that. <laughs> yeah, it's really great because it, it is really encouraging of getting away from um, really rigid thinking. So, you know, people have really uh, solidified beliefs about themselves, about the world, things like that. And it encourages kind of separating from that ultimate truth and allowing for flexibility and complexity in what's what's really going on. Um, so that's the first letter. It's and like fluidity. Totally. Yeah. It's like and breaking out of the binary. Yeah, exactly. It's queer in a way um, <laughs> it's, yeah yeah because it, it's you know people will be like oh you know um this is uh this is my firm belief about the self and and sometimes I'll come to another belief about the self and then it's like okay so um and is a really important word you feel this and you feel this um people, that's one major intervention and actually a big, uh, big skill that's talked about is how can you be more dialectical in your thinking? How can you combine and synthesize what's actually, um, what's actually around you? Because the human experience is not always one thing. Maybe it feels that way in one moment in time, but not, um, not 24 seven. Right. Right. So Speaking of 24 <laughs> seven, I wrote down that, so DBT, you were saying dialectical, mm -hmm. B stands for? Behavioral. Okay. Yeah. And, and um, that there's three pieces, individual therapy, mm -hmm. skills group. Yeah. And for the phone for 20. Phone coaching. Yeah. Phone coaching for 24 seven. Yeah. Um, but that's just as needed they're not on the phone 24 seven, obviously. Right, yeah, so that's a, that's a boundary that's discussed between client and uh, therapist is, when is it appropriate to call your therapist? Sometimes it is appropriate to call your therapist at three in the morning and that's in, in instances of um, not being able to keep yourself safe um, and needing support there. So um, that'll be discussed, but yeah, that was that was a part of the treatment is, is uh, clients having my personal cell phone number or a cell phone number that they can reach me personally at any hour. Um, okay. Yeah. Part of the reason for that also was, um, so new behaviors, so the B is uh, behavior, behavioral behavior therapy. So 
it has a lot to do with exploring causation. So one thing will instigate another experience. So one cue in the environment will instigate another, whether it's um, a happening in the environment, creating a thought, a happening in the environment, creating a reaction or a thought, creating a reaction or any other version of that. Um, and there's a big emphasis on skills and it's very difficult to learn skills one 50 minute session yeah. um, in your whole life. Yeah. So, so this is like a well-rounded um, process. Is it just one person or now is there a team? So ideally it's a team. Uh, it's yeah, I was going to say, otherwise you've got individual, well, skills group. Yeah. Can, I guess it could still be the same therapist. And yeah, then the, even the way that it's viewed is, is every client has a team of therapists. Mm -hmm. So the client will have their individual therapist. They'll have their skills uh, uh, leaders. Um, and then um, the clients are aware that there is uh, part of the protocol has a consult meeting where therapists will also have a very protocolized and structured version to discuss the cases. Um, so they can kind of feel like they are supported in a lot of different ways and a lot of different elements. Great. Um, it sounds really profound. Now, who can, who, what, and where can someone get this type of treatment? I guess the first question is like, who is this treatment for? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's an interesting question. Uh, technically, it was developed for folks with, um, with um, possibly co-occurring disorders, uh, high reactivity, high sensitivity, difficulty managing emotions, uh, maybe, um, let's see, other things. I'll think of more stuff later, but. Um, but high reactivity, you said, high yeah. sensitivity. Yeah. Um, probably like impulsivity, I'm imagining. Oh, yes, impulsivity. Um, mm -hmm. You said something, what was the last thing you said? I can't remember. Uh, I, difficulty I, like regulating emotions. Difficulty regulating emotions, often co-occurring disorders, uh, things like that. So um, it's people looking to have more tools and skills to be able to manage basically themselves and, uh, and a little bit of their environment. So, yeah. um, so... We're, we're yeah, I mean, you know, it just, it sounds like a lot and, you know, so I guess I'm just curious, like, how do you as a therapist maybe determine if somebody would qualify for DBT? Like what yeah. signs are you looking for? Oh yeah. So, so it's interesting. The full protocol DBT is for kind of that group uh, that I was describing, but I've found that the skills themselves are so universal, whether you're just someone who kind of deals with stress every now and again, or if you maybe are going through a difficult time and haven't really explored this side of you that, um, that feels more challenged than you've been before. Um, so I've actually found that even like, even starting with a new group of clients, clients going, uh, going in specifically for sex therapy related issues or relational issues, um, those skills come up just as much, um, just because it's, um, it has to do with understand, well, I actually find it ties, the DBT skills specifically tie really, really nicely with the model of differentiation, which is something that's talked so much about in, in um, relational therapy, so. I can jump into that too. Yeah, yeah. I was like, just tell, ex yeah. explain to our, tell you know, our audience, what does that, what does differentiation mean? Yeah. Yeah. So that's something that there's uh, a few pieces that, um, that come from being able to manage sort of anxiety and, and uh, in relationship. And one of that is knowing how you feel, um, number one, and being able to express how you feel in a relationship. And then also being able to hear how your partner or partners feel um, and manage your feelings based on what comes up from hearing those things. Um, and the way that I see it in, in working with a lot of um, relationships, some people will have different challenges. Some people will have opposing challenges. Some, some uh, relationships will have the same challenges, but with the first piece, knowing how you feel, like knowing your emotions, 
there's this whole uh, module in DBT that's emotion regulation that is basically just teaching what emotions are, what they do for us, and how to manage them. So that's huge, uh, huge, hugely overlapping with that. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's the piece about communicating them. So part of communication is managing the feelings that come from maybe scared, uh, fear of communication, something like this. And then also um, doing it like the actual communication piece in an effective way, which is um, this other module from DBT, which is interpersonal effectiveness. So being effective in communication, knowing what you want to do and how to do it or how to achieve that in a, in a conversation. Mm -hmm. um, and then well, the last one. Uh, oh, and then managing feelings when you hear uh, somebody else communicating with you or expressing something to you. Similarly, uh, that comes from both, that, that can be pulled from both uh, emotion regulation and, and uh, distress tolerance and interpersonal effectiveness, depending mm -hmm. on how, how significant the conversation is. Okay. So, um, so, so you don't have to be doing the full scope DBT in order to get the benefits of some of the tools that you, that you use in that. So, um, mm -hmm. Would you say that a lot of therapists practice um, like parts of DBT now? Yeah, so I would say yes. And there's uh, depending on like what modality there is, um, it, a lot of modalities tend to interact and have different, uh, maybe different versions of it. So uh, I'll give an example. There's an entire module as well, that's which is a mindfulness module, which is Right. readily accepted and um and available in a lot of different uh types of treatment which is uh really managing your attention so that's that's something that comes from um even even maybe this is i'll say this is more of an opinion but even the practice of therapy in and of itself directing your attention and being intentional about where you're directing your attention is in a way, uh, developing that skill a little bit. So, um, right, right. yeah, so it's, it's a conglomeration of a lot of different skills that you'll find in, um, in many different types of treatment. Uh, right, is, right, right, yeah. for sure, gotcha. And so how do you, now that you're doing sex therapy, how do you use it, like maybe say with couples or something like that? How do you combine all of it, the diet, the DBT, the psychodynamic, and the sex therapy. Yeah, yeah. So it's a good question. It's it's almost like um, uh, every client it looks a little bit differently. Like which what stuff is being pulled from what places. But um, so a lot of the times we'll have a conversation about mindfulness and developing that skill. Whether it's um, for someone who needs to do more of a, a, a sensate focus type exercise, looking into what's really happening in a given moment. Um, sometimes I'll pull from uh, uh, the mindfulness specifically skill, which is, um, and this is another thing, is there's so much didactic conversation from DBT. So a lot more, a lot of education, a lot of psychoeducation, breaking things down in a lot of detail. So some people, you can say like, focus your attention. And it's like, cool, I know what that means. I got it, I can do that. Some people don't. Some people need a lot more conversation about what that actually means and how to actually get to the point of taking the reins of your own attention and shining the flashlight. Um, so that's one way. Um, I feel like I can come up with so many ways. Uh, yeah. Another way is just emotions. Emotions get in the way um, a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. um, whether whether it's like an evaluative emotion, like oh, you know, I feel so judgmental of myself for X Y Z, or I feel so frustrated with myself, or mm -hmm. um, or maybe attending to something uh, something else uh, like in, like stress or anxiety or worry, um, and then combining. So mindfulness is is foundational because it, it is that ability to control your attention. And then it's what do you do once you have the attention back in your hands, which uh, is where other skills come from, like um, managing difficult emotions that get in the way. Um, so for folks who are, for example, developing a, a, like a stronger relationship with their bodies, a stronger relationship with themselves, 
sometimes that's really complicated. Like, um, like it takes a few levels to get to the point of really just being in conversation. Um, so that's where I find both mindfulness and emotion regulation, uh, just as sort of beefing up the ability to actually look and hear and feel. Right. Right. So it's great for sex therapy. It sounds like it's great for couples who have communication, like, you know, emotions always sort of are like one of the stumbling blocks when it comes to like healthy yes. communication. It's always like, well, all these emotions are there. Um, what do you feel most passionate about now that you've got this like wealth of experience? What excites you? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I mean, I'm debating if I want to go like person, like my personal uh, stuff too. Um, yeah, for yeah. sure. Take your time, whatever feels most comfortable. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's the both that like training in sex therapy has been a really personal development for me too. Um, it's like, I was thinking about this earlier, uh, which is, I had been training in DBT and I got, uh, I, you know, toot my own horn, I got pretty good at being able to teach it. Um, and still like, I'm, you know, 27 years old, I still had my own uh, and still do have my own explorations and all of that. Um, so it's kind of like this extra, uh... okay, so here's how I think about it. <laughs> it's this, this piece, so the DBT piece is very much about like um, paying attention and being able to manage certain things. But as I've started learning more about sex therapy and relational therapy, it's also um, the extra additive question of the evaluative piece from an embodied place. So like, uh, what do you like? What don't you like uh, from a physical experience? And that's just an extra thing um, on top of the ability to uh, to attend to and manage, which is uh, something even more special, even more deep. So it's kind of like walking along that same path at the same time. Like the the self awareness, self understanding piece is really special to me in getting people to the point of being able to see themselves a little bit more, rather than getting caught up in, for example, the communication issues like. Um, uh, a lot of times our stuff, uh, this is where the psychodynamic piece comes up, stuff gets in the way, whether it's attachment styles um, that cause us to react to different relationships in a certain way, um, whether it's uh, trauma history that makes us really uh, afraid or avoidant of certain things. Um, there's sometimes a separation between uh, between that full self experience or that really strong relationship with the self. Um, so what excites me most is like getting to that point of, uh, I see myself, I hear myself uh, in, in a more deep and more complex way, um, both personally and professionally. Nice. <laughs> I love it. That sounds yeah. great. So um, it sounds like what you're saying is that you're getting you know, all this training, all this stuff, you know, you're working with people, but in the process, you're also learning about yourself. Yeah. Constantly. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Is there anything else you would like to share about yourself, your experience um, that I haven't asked you yet? Um, Who are your favorite clients? My favorite clients? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. What do you want? Uh, what do you, who do you love to work with? Your ideal? Yeah. It's hard to say. I mean, so similarly, the folks who are really looking for uh, self understanding, maybe they're queer, exploring their gender identity, gender expression. I, I really love working with that because that's uh, one version of developing a relationship with the self. But I also find it really rewarding for couples or people who are in maybe more high conflict um, because it's it's almost like walking through all of the like 
trauma responses, all of the noise, all of the stress, all of the habits, and then eventually like working together to find uh, a more stable environment uh, as a team or, or, uh, or a group of people. And then being able to really see the self and express the self before uh, having that sort of response that goes from zero to hundred or zero to 80 when where we're, we're just kind of in that reactionary mode instead of um, hearing and seeing and exploring with one another, which is uh, something that is a possibility when you're able to kind of stay regulated with one another and, and see each other that way. So, yeah. So like slowing down, slowing it way down, <laughs> slowing it way down and, yeah. and, and being, you know, explorers and excavators rather than opponents who are, you know, ready to fight at each other's throats. Yeah. I mean, that's what happens when, we do escalate from zero to a hundred. It's we're going into fight or flight. So we're going to be opponents. We're not seeing each other as teammates anymore. So yeah, I think that regulating piece comes in handy, you know, on so many levels. So yeah. yeah. And, you know, to couple it with the, you know, the queer experience and, you know, the trans experience and, you know, gender exploration, I think is, is so key. And I think for a long time, in my experience, that was left out of therapy. You know, yeah. there was always this under exploration of self, but it wasn't, um, you know, it wasn't um, inclusive. It wasn't always, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like validated. Inter- well, intersect, you know, like mm-hmm. intersecting with all the different parts of us, you know, um, yeah. psychotherapy has been very narrow for a really long time, so. Yeah, Yeah. I think that's, um, that kind of makes me think of like another piece of where, how all of these things integrate is, um, so there's uh, there's an exploration of validation uh, in early childhood and how that affects sort of the ability to cope with stress in life. and like integrating the queer experience with that, like some or many kids don't don't really understand that experience until later on in life. So right. there's this sort of confusion. Um, and I, I know for me, it was really like a, a whole world opened up when I started learning about queerness and uh, gender expression and gender identity, which is uh, almost a validating experience. And when you go for so long without a validating experience, it can be really difficult. And it actually, um, some studies have been shown lacking validation early on is, uh, is a big factor in contributing to uh, that sort of high reactivity, high sensitivity. Um, that that's really interesting. Yeah. I would, I would totally agree with that. I've never seen that study, but that sounds right. Um, because you, you experience like people that have experienced a lot of trauma that are highly sensitive or, um, highly reactive as, as we're talking about, um, are not familiar with what it feels like like to be understood, you know, or what it feels like to have somebody mirror back to you, what you're saying. Um, and so like that it's foreign, it's a foreign experience for people to be validated for sure. Um, and scary. yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's a journey. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Well, I'm excited for your personal journey as well as, um, you're helping others in their journey towards self-discovery. Um, anything else you want to tell us about yourself, Kane, that you think is important for future and potential clients to know about you? Um, well, I like to let people know that I'm also queer. I consider myself gender fluid. Um, Jewish sometimes uh, that that's uh, important for some folks so um yeah those are some of my social identities that show up in the room I love it I love yeah. it yeah I love that you that you center the queer experience as well I think that's um I love that I think it's important so thank you for your work Kane and thank you for um letting me interview you today yeah um, everybody t- why don't you tell everybody where they can find you uh, so you can email me at Kane at Los Angeles sex um, or a last collective, uh, is another way to reach that. Um, yeah. yeah. 
Pain works for Los Angeles Sex Therapy. So um, check out their profile. And um, if you are interested, um, definitely reach out and ask Kane questions. I'll, so I'll put on the, all the information um, down in the caption. But thank you so much. And that was the sex talk. Thank you, Mo. Next